Welcome to the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast, presented by Vox DFS Firelines. Now, here are your hosts, Justin. Stephon Gilmore go to the Patriots. Now they let Mike Gillisley go to the Patriots. Are they now just the farm club within their own division? Greg. He's one of these faux leading women. It's like, that's not Angelina Jolie or Jennifer Anderson. It's some girl that I would see at the Circle K. That's kind of Alshon Jeffrey. And Ryan. There is absolutely no reason why O.J. Howard should be drafted before Cameron Brait. All right, welcome to another Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Skullrood. Um, sorry it's been a couple weeks, like we said, uh, uh, kind of in our little intro here that uh, we had some internet issues last week, um, dealt with some family issues a couple, you know, a couple weeks before that, so we haven't really been posting a whole lot in terms of full-on podcasts, but I would like to give a quick shout-out to Greg, uh, who is on the podcast with us tonight. Uh, for his, you know, what, probably for a week that he's been doing, um, going over two teams, um, uh, each podcast, kind of giving the, his his view of the fantasy football outlook. So uh, thank you, Greg, for uh, keeping the content going. Anything I can do, Ryan. I'm just <laughs> part of the team and happy to participate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also with us tonight, Justin is back for another episode. Go ahead and say hi, Justin. Hello, everyone. All right, so before we get started with the news and notes, because there is a lot that has needed to be covered over the last couple weeks, um, we have a couple announcements to make. Um, One, we are running a big, big, huge giveaway promotion, I guess you could say, uh, for for the website. And what we are doing is we are giving away, oh, you've got, okay, let me pull up the other one. I don't know if they can see my screen though. Uh, on the well, on the recording uh, when it goes to uh, when it goes to Patreon and when it goes to YouTube, they will be able to. So Justin is holding up the second prize, which is hold it up a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. There yes, we go. Yes, a mar- yes. I'll signed, talk so they can see it. <laughs> a signed Martavis Bryant uh, jersey is our second prize for this drawing, and uh, I have uh, number one, uh, the J Ajayi. Uh, number 23, signed there down at the bottom, signed. Um, we're going to be giving away these two jerseys, and uh, third prize will be, you know, just one of our T-shirts. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, we got to have three. We got, yeah, we got to have three prizes. So um, what you can do to enter into, um, to enter into that drawing, um, you can go to uh, our, either our pinned tweet on, um, on uh, Skull King Fantasy uh, Art, at Skull King FB on Twitter, um, the pin tweet on our profile. Um, there's a link there where you can find out everything to do. Um, uh, in order to get in the drawing, you need to one, leave a uh, review of our podcast, which there's a link on there to do. Um, if you could screenshot that and share that with us, uh, that would be awesome. Um, number two, uh, a second thing that you can do, so that would be one entry for the for the, the review. Uh, a second entry, you can get a second entry if you become a supporter of ours on Patreon uh, for as little for as little as one dollar a month. Um, you can be a supporter on Patreon, and that will give you an entry. And the third thing that you can do is to um, buy or download um, our uh, 2017 draft guide that uh, we just uh, put out last week. Um, if you um, are decide not to become a supporter on Patreon, you can buy it on our website for five dollars. If you do become a supporter on Patreon for only a dollar a month, you get it for free. So if you become a supporter on Patreon, it's only it really only costs you a buck. So, yep. um, and again, if you do all three of those things, you get ten entries in. Your name will get thrown in the hat ten times instead of just once or twice. So. Um, we would really, uh, we'd love for you guys to to get in there. We'd um, looking forward to being able to give these jerseys away, um, and so yeah, that's uh, our major, our major, major announcement, and that kind of covers all of our bases. So, um, if there isn't anything else from Justin, is there anything else you need to remind me of that I usually tend to forget? Uh, not in terms of some of the stuff that's coming up. All right, 
Anything else? Okay. I'm sure there's other things that you probably need to remind me of that aren't necessarily relevant. Yeah, probably. We'll get to it. <laughs> now. All right. We got the full show to get to. All right. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and start off with our news and notes. Um, and here we go. So since we've been out of it for a little while, um, we're going to go back and cover a couple things just so that we can give uh, a little bit of um, our analysis on. So uh, per ESPN Saints reporter Mike Triplett, Mark Ingram has been, quote, very active in the passing game all camp. Um, considering that they brought in Adrian Peterson, I consider Peterson kind of the one, t- the first and second down hammer. And, you know, Ingram has a lot of value in the passing game where Peterson doesn't. And so for me, this, I mean, I don't see a whole lot of, I think Ingram's main um, value is going to be in PPR this year. I don't necessarily see it in in standard. So, I mean, for me, it's not really news news. Um, Texans wide receiver Will Fuller broke his collarbone out two to three months. And from what I saw earlier today, it looks like the um, Jalen Ramsey or Jalen Strong, Jalen Strong. Uh, Jalen Strong is going is uh, has been in starting in the two wide receiver sets and not Braxton Miller. Um, so we'll see if Jalen Strong can finally put it together. Uh, Sun Devils, baby. Sun Devils. <laughs> yeah, there's our Arizona boy right there. Um, he Sterling, was good in college. Couldn't catch yeah, the ball in training camp last year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sterling Shepard, after a, a big scare with his ankle injury, turns out to just be a low ankle sprain. I believe he's actually finally back at practice now. Um, a big hit to – I seriously, the Chargers are one of the most cursed teams when it comes to injuries. How is their staff not fired yet? Their training staff, somehow. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Um, my Honestly, my favorite offensive lineman going into this last draft, uh, Chargers rookie Forrest Lamp, suffered a um, torn ACL and is out for the year. Um, so that, for me, that, gr- that affects um, Melvin Gordon a little bit in terms of his value. Um, as a runner, so poor Philip Rivers. He's gonna and he's still gonna end up on his back a whole bunch this year. Um, here's something that I know that we'll want to talk about a little bit. Uh, ESPN Packers reporter uh, Rob Demo- Rob Demofsky calls fourth round pick Jamal Williams the quote most likely running back to push Ty Montgomery for snaps. I know, uh, Greg, you have a couple thoughts on on Jamal Williams and Ty Montgomery. Yeah, I mean, we're going to we're going to get back to that I think probably late in the draft or in the show today when we talk about underdrafted running backs, but I think Jamal Williams ultimately is going to end up as the number 1 there. I think Ty Montgomery's value is going to slide considerably at this point. Uh he holds little value as a pure receiver when you look at the the combined staff that's out there. Um, you know, already he's he's at a number four spot there. So uh, I think anything that Williams does, and I know he's been, I think, banged up the last couple of days in camp, but uh, I think everything's pointing to him really cementing a, a pretty solid role there in the running game. All right. Um, Jordan Reed, again, you know, we talked about, you know, we missed this, but Jordan Reed day-to-day after his checkup, uh, uh, about his toe and ankle, like and like we said, we know it's we know it's preseason when Jordan Reed's already you know got a couple injuries and is missing practices. So, Lions running back coach David Walker confirmed that Amir Abdullah will be the Lions' feature back. Again, this is I I was one of those guys that fell for the Amir Abdullah hype a couple years ago. It all depends on if he can stay healthy. He can be electric if he can stay healthy. And I just, with how small he is, I just don't know if that's, I don't know if that's a possibility. I think Amir Abdullah has to be a depth play if you already have two solid running backs. If you're looking at him to be your every week go-to guy in a one or a two position, then I think you're, you're taking a significant amount of risk that's unlikely to pay off. Well, I mean, for right now, he's, he's going as, was it, looks like he's going in PPR leagues, he's going in about the fifth round. Uh, running back number 23, just above Adrian Peterson and C.J. Anderson. Everybody should generally have two running backs by that point. I he don't. should be well above C.J. Anderson. I don't usually. Not in PPR. No? No, I usually have 
I, I usually have uh, three or four wide receivers at that point and maybe one. Usually, you know, Danny Woodhead would probably be my first wide res- or my first running back picked in like the fourth or fifth round. Depending on where you pick, though, right? I mean, if you fall number one. Uh, well, that's, that's true. My, I've been lucky, en- I, lucky enough, I guess you could say. I usually fall towards the end of the draft. Every time, I, every time you know, we do random picks for, for where we end up in the draft, I'm usually back half. So. Because yeah, if you're top, the top three, <laughs> like if you're top five, you're 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 taking a running back, right? I mean, that all I... that all depends on which running. If if a running back, if the first, if the top, if I'm number five and the top three running backs are taken, well, then I'm taking either Julio, right. AB, or um, if if uh, Le'Veon falls a little bit, which could be a possibility with this holdout, maybe. I mean, yeah, I'd probably take him. I'd also shore him up with James Conner at the end of the draft, but so. Do you take Ezekiel Elliott in the top five? I'd have to wait. Luckily, most of my drafts aren't until like just like just before the season. Gotcha. Like I've one of my drafts. I want to say my two drafts. My two main drafts are uh, the day of the last preseason game and the other one's the day before the last preseason game. So we, I mean, luckily my leagues wait until like the last possible minute to draft. So it's based on the Chris Carter report. I would assume a four game suspension. Interesting. Then in that case, no, he's not top five. I'd okay. probably wait. To, I, if it were me, I'd wait till the second round. Okay. So, all right, back to, back to the news. Um, Zay Jones uh, is cementing himself as the number two wide receiver for the Bills, but we also know that Anquan Bolden just signed there. So I believe, you know, um, Greg and I were kind of talking back and forth that it's probably going to be a um, a back and forth battle between those two as to who will be the actual number two behind Sammy Watkins and eventually the actual number one when Sammy Watkins goes down again. <laughs> right. I think Zay Jones will be the number two until third down when Bolden comes on the field. That's exactly, yeah. I think that's yeah. exactly <laughs> the point. I mean, there's only one of those three wide receivers who can move the chains for years since the first day he came into the NFL. So that third down variable, I think, is huge when it comes to Bolden and what it means for, for Zay Jones' production. Yeah. Um, I saw another report. It may be. It may come up here later, but I'll just go ahead and bring it up while we're on while we're on the Bills. Um, I saw a report that uh, one of the beat writers, I want to say it's Joe Biscaglia, said that he believes that uh, Lashawn McCoy is a dark horse to lead the team in receptions for this year. So I think that would assume, in my opinion, that would assume a a Sammy Watkins injury and possibly another injury to a wide receiver at that point. Um, in order for that to happen. so, And that also assumes that the Tyrod Taylor was the worst signing of all time if he's going to spend all season dumping it off to a running back. Yeah. So let's see. Um, Mark, well, we already talked about Mark Ingram wants to state that he, he wants to prove that he's a complete back. But, you know, his coach hates him. Sean Payton, Sean Payton hates him. So that's why they brought in Adrian Peterson. Um, Mike, here we go. Your old team, the Chicago Bears. Mike Glennon and Meredith are showing uh, great rapport already. Although the last practice videos I saw, Mike Glennon was airmailing the ball to the stands. Right, exactly. First of all, as somebody from Chicago, let me explain the media. Don't trust anything that ever comes out of Chicago, (laughs) whether it's politics or the media. It's all BS. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I, I've seen some of these port reports before as well. I mean, I think we'll get to Cameron Meredith, uh, you know, in this conversation because he if he's going to fall into our topic as far as being underdrafted. But um, there's no great glory going on with Glennon and anybody. I mean, let's just, let's just be realistic here. <laughs> All right. Um, next, trying to find actual, like, necessary um, – Titans rookie wide receiver Corey Davis uh, had an MRI on his leg. I believe it was a, I believe it was his hamstring. He still says that he's week to week. That's going to hurt his draft stock a little bit. Um, DeMarco Murray, I don't think is quite yet back to practice with his hamstring injury. 
Um, the Washington Post's master, tef, uh, forget it. Um, the Washington Post uh, reporter wrote that it's clear that Rob Kelly will be the Redskins' number one running back. Um, so that kind of dumps the the fire on some of the Samaje Perine hype, at least for now. Um, we'll kind of see how it goes in in preseason, but um, I think Rob Kelly's another one that should come up in our conversation later as well. Now that I look at it, um, moving on. Uh, Let's see. Forte was signed was sidelined with a hamstring issue. No surprise. Um, ESPN Bills reporter uh, says that uh, Tyrod Taylor's first five days of camp have quote left something to be desired. That's always great to hear. Um, we know about Ryan Tannehill and his partially torn ACL, so that they brought so they they brought in Jay Cutler, meaning that uh, Greg's. Our, let's let's be honest. This is our staff's favorite section of our website. Right. Is Greg's little bits that he ends at that he ends every single one of his quarterback articles with, and it's called Cutler's Corner. And I got to admit, we are all extremely happy to know that Cutler's Corner will be back for another year. At least one. At least at, one. At, at least, well, you know, I think, I think Jay is beginning um, just another phase in what's going to be a very long career. Um, and I, I think I see hope for, for Cutler's Corner uh, in the future. I, I think this is going to – it's not leaving us anytime soon, guys. I mean, <laughs> we have – we might have three, four more years of this. <laughs> I, mean, I, I smell quarterback controversy. Oh, Cue gosh. the Will Smith Miami song. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Um, Bengals.com Je uh, Jeff Hobson suggested Joe Mike Joe Mixon is likely to see over twenty touches per game in Week One against the Ravens. Starting Week One, twenty touches per game for Joe Mixon. We know, however, that Gio Bernard is back. They haven't released Jeremy Hill, and Jeremy Hill has had over the last three years has had what twenty nine touchdowns. I want to say he's one of the top three guy, one of the top few guys in touchdowns over the last three years. He hasn't been super productive overall since his rookie season when he had to take over for Gio, but he's always been a goal line threat his entire career so far. But that's about all he's been because he tends to put the ball on the ground. Um, we know that Gio, again, we know that Gio is back practicing in full um, because we have the we have the the great video of um, Vontae's perfect jump jumping at um, at Gio's knees in attack oh, was it in a in a scrimmage and the running back coach just about came and tackled perfect for it because you've got Gio that just came off ACL injury so. Um, we'll kind of see, I'll, we'll monitor that right now. I have, I think I'm still leaning towards Mixon leading this, uh, leading this backfield once we get into the season. But, um, I, I still have some, some hope for Gio in the background, especially as a, as a pass catcher. I would take, um, and I'm going to keep saying this, uh, I would take Mixon over Leonard Fournette and everybody in front of him in between those two spaces. So I, I would have Mixon right now as breaking, you know, on, on the uh, on the border of a top ten running back. I think only Christian McCaffrey would be in that group. If you look at um, fantasyfootballcalculator.com, dot uh, com, that space after a Jay Ajahi all the way down to Mixon, I don't see why Mixon doesn't close that entire gap. Maybe Marshawn Lynch, but Crowell, no. Montgomery, absolutely not. Lamar Miller, give me a break. Todd Gurley, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, so uh, I think Joe Mixon has stands a real, real chance of, of contending for Rookie of the Year. I can see it. Um, all right, moving on. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Uh, that doesn't matter. Moving on. All right, so we've got, I don't want to say necessarily a quarterback controversy, but it's basically coming back and forth between two reporters in Cleveland. Um, Mary Kay Cabot keeps saying from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, believes that second-round quarterback Deshaun Kaiser, quote, won the first week of training camp and has moved closer to being, naming, uh, being named the starter for the preseason opener. But then you go back, and I want to say it was either today, maybe it was yesterday. Let me see. Yeah. 
today, 11 hours ago. ESPN Browns reporter Pat McManaman believes that the Browns' starting quarterback job is Brock Osweiler's to lose. That is – okay, so if we look at this, if they were politicians speaking, when it says there's to lose, there's also this assumption that there, there's also that part of that, which that is the assumption that they are going to lose it because they haven't played any games yet. So there's four games going ahead. Brock Osweiler could easily crap the bed in that period of time or within the very beginning of the season, and all of a sudden Watson gets catapulted up there. I am, or I'm sorry, Kaiser gets catapulted up there. I'm not a fan of starting Kaiser. This I've said it repeatedly. I don't think he should be starting. But, like, there's nobody in front of him. So for him to, like, look like the man and unseat those two clowns in front of him, isn't exactly a high, you know, a high watermark to try to achieve. So, you know, I would lean towards the the original report where where Kaiser's falling. All right. Uh, you mean where he's going down and it's yeah, where he's falling as far as maybe you can clarify as being maybe the guy who ends up winning this thing out. Yeah. Um. You know, I I got to be honest. Kessler didn't do terrible last year. He wasn't great. Wasn't great. Um, you know, was on pace for like 27, 2800 yards passing. Um, but you know, when you have to, you have no other option. You know, there was, I mean, who was their wide receivers last year? Terrell Pryor. Yeah, you had, yeah, you just had, you had Pryor, you had Barnridge. Well, arguably they had more receivers last year than they're going to this year. That's true. Um, yeah, so, I mean, last year, yeah, he went eight and no, started eight games, but I mean he was also injured a little injured a while, and I think those games were kind of scattered about because of his injuries. But I mean he did have a sixty five percent completion percentage, a you know, a six to two touchdown interception. I mean, he wasn't terrible, but I mean he was I mean, it wasn't great, but he was better than Jared Goff, so You're right. <laughs> That's not saying much. No. <laughs> that doesn't take much though. All right. Um you know, we already mentioned this a little bit, so I'll just no, let's all just leave it. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, let's see. Jaguars first round running back Leonard Fournette was listed as a co-starter on the team's first unofficial depth chart of training, of training camp. Who is he co-starter with? Two other guys who suck. Ivory or <laughs> Yeldon? No. Yeah, he's, that's the he's, unofficial he's, one. That's keeping this a rookie is, This humble. is more non-news news. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah non-news it's, news. As being reported by CNN. Yes. All right. Uh, here's okay. Here's kind of handcuff information. DeAndre Washington has been getting quote all the second team uh, running back reps over Jalen Richard at Raiders camp. So basically, we know that it's going to be Lynch and DeAndre Washington. Which means DeAndre Washington's going to get at least two hundred touches because they're not going to let he'll Lynch get 100, have more than two hundred. He'll get one hundred to one fifty. Yeah. And I actually had I okay I have this argument on on Facebook in one of my in one of my Facebook groups Justin you actually saw my comments I know that you um that you yes. uh you uh you know like this but you know I mentioned the fact that the Raiders have already stated that they're only going to give um the uh so many um touches to um Marshawn Lynch Marshawn Lynch and I just, oh shoot, I just realized we have no sound probably going on Twitter. Dang it. All right, I can fix that in a second. Um, and so, because of that, the reason they're going to do that is because they signed him for the playoffs. They want to keep him fresh so that he can ball out in the playoffs. So they're not going to overload him the entire freaking season, especially with him having taken an entire season off. So I think that, uh, I think that Washington will get a lot of playing time this year, personally. I think that's a really good assessment. I completely agree with that. All right. Um, we're still trying to figure out what's going on in Baltimore with Joe Flacco's back, <laughs> and, and what and what they're and what they're going to do there. Um, there still has been no official Colin Kaepernick sighting slash signing, um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Joe Flacco is the kind of bride that you find in the deep hills of West Virginia. <laughs> um, 
Suspended uh, wide receiver Michael Floyd has been playing uh, with the Vikings' top three receiver package and has made several impressive sideline catches. That's probably because it was in practice and he didn't really have a defender on him. Cheers. Yeah, he probably stopped <laughs> drinking kombucha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been looking and for that. And stopped driving his car. <laughs> you know what? I, I hate tea, but I've been looking for this booze tea all over the place. I cannot. You can't cannot find kombucha? Find I, I thought it was like near the beers or whatever the vodka. No. It's not in that, it's not in that area. You can't find it. No, you, know, you can usually find it with like the the um like the organic juices or with the uh, like the soft drinks and stuff. Oh, I've never seen that aisle. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it means only in the beer aisle. No, don't know where that's at. All right. Um, okay. NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah believes that wide receiver Nelson Aguilar is going to play in the slot, and he will be shocked if he doesn't so that means that since they signed alshon jeffrey and tory smith that he's replacing jordan matthews and then we go back to well no no look uh who was it might not have been on sleeper but it may have been somewhere else um oh yeah philly's philly voices uh jimmy kempinski uh believes there's still a chance that the Eagles trade Jordan Matthews. There may believe that the, his greatest value to the Eagles is a trade candidate. Yeah, because well, there's so many trades in the NFL. Right. I mean, yeah, that that being a fine point, Justin, and the other – I mean, what other teams are you going to look for to, to send them to? Like the Rams? I mean, there's – how many teams just have, like, no wide receivers? I mean, Jordan Matthews is not in, is not in demand. And that means you're elevating Alshon Jeffrey to your number one. I, You know what? We've already seen that before. It doesn't work. You cannot make him the number one. Torrey Smith is a number three to four. At best, he's not a number two let alone sliding Al Galore. I mean, what are they trying to do to Carson Wentz? I mean, it's like they're sabotaging the guy. It's, it's unbelievable to, to say you're going to ship out Jordan Matthews, the one guy he's got any remote chemistry with whatsoever. Well, him and, him and Zach Ertz at tight end. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, it, yeah, we all know how much we can count on Ertz. Yeah, I know he, he, where he ultimately finishes, but that's a, that's a you know – there's two kinds of statistics, statistics and then lies. And that's the one that hurts <laughs> the when you see him as a top 10 tight end. That's a load of crap. <laughs> yeah, that's three great games, and the rest of the games he was outside of the top 20. Exactly. Anybody who played fantasy football back in the day when Tim Brown was a productive wide receiver understands that exact dynamic, where it's like four games a season led him to be in the top four of receiving. It's like, how the hell did that happen? I had him on the bench most of the year. It was those four games that you missed when you like put up 200 yards a game. All right. Uh Neck injury and the hits keep coming for the Jets. They really are working hard at being getting that number one uh, that number one draft pick. Number this one next draft year. pick goes to the Jets. <laughs> Nick injury for the only talented wide receiver on the team, Quincy Anunua, and he has actually already been put on injured reserve for the hey, year hey, hey, and hey. is gone. Robbie Anderson can catch the ball. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, man, I was kind of looking forward to maybe adding Quincy Nunez as a late, you know, late round draft flyer just to kind of see how it ended yeah. up. Because I love, again, yeah, I ahead. love grabbing the number one receiver on a crap team. Yeah, because he's going to be the main target. Right. He's going to be the touchdown target. It's it, it's why I like people like Kenny Britt, Cameron Meredith. They're on horrible offenses. But they're the number one receiver. Same as Robert Woods. It's the same thing. They're the number one receivers on a horrible offense. It's Pierre. the hottest girl at a bowling alley theory. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre Garçon. Yeah. There's another one in San Francisco. He'll be the number one there in a, in a Kyle Shanahan offense, which is the only real offense that he's ever been super productive in. Hey, so. don't steal my thunder for later. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, according to the Houston Chronicle, Tom Savage is clearly ahead of rookie quarterback uh, um, Deshaun Watson two weeks into camp. Not necessarily surprising. Um, Watson looked good tonight. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch the game tonight, so I'm glad he looked good. That's good he, to hear. He still looks like the guy that I thought the Bears should draft over Trubisky, but that's neither <laughs> here nor there. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Marshawn Lynch has been everything the Raiders hoped for in return, and they saw the speed yesterday. He never has really been a fast guy. He's just barreled over people. Um, Martavis Bryant has been cleared to play. Here's some here's some sleeper hype. Uh, Lions rookie wide receiver Kenny Galladay looks like a red zone weapon so far. Um, I liked Galladay coming into the draft. Um, he's got good size. I want to say he's 6'3", uh, a little over, right around 200 pounds. Um, can make acrobatic catches. Really is a has a has solid hands. I. I think that it's possible that he could move past Marvin Jones, although Marvin Jones has also took uh, this whole offseason to work with Randy Moss on his footwork and everything to uh, to try to improve uh, um, off of the, the dreadful final two-thirds of last season, which really cost me. Um, yeah, I could see I'm, – I'm keeping an eye – this is kind of my, my wide receiver sleeper look. You know, keep an eye on Kenny Galladay and how things end up in that, uh, that Lions offense. Um, in terms of, in terms of uh, rookie wide receivers, the sleeper ones that I'm keeping an eye on, Kenny Galladay, and like we already talked about, Zay Jones. So, um, Let's see. Hey, Josh Doxson exited Sunday's practice early with a hamstring injury. The guy that can't stay healthy, couldn't stay healthy all last year. Still can't stay healthy, meaning the door is still open for Pryor and Jamison Crowder to basically own the receptions in that offense. And a lot of people like Josh Stockson um, to really make a, a big splash this year. I know that uh, Beer Fueled Fantasy really likes Stockson this year. And it's a little bit less on Terrell Pryor, aren't they? Yeah, I'm, I am a Terrell Pryor truther. Um, yes. I have Terrell Pryor. Uh, I'm, you know, we are I don't, all Terrell Pryor truthers. <laughs> well, yeah, it, the triumphant of Pryor truthers. I mean, it, yeah, there's no way I would take Dotson over over Pryor. You've got to be. You've, you, you're well, not that, not that they would take fantasy. him over. Yeah, not that they would oh, take okay. him over, but they're 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 more in terms of where they're currently at. They believe that Pryor is not as as good as he's hyped and that Doxson is better than where he is currently being drafted. Well, if you get 1,000 yards playing with a turd and then you're playing with a guy who's throwing for 4,500 yards playing for a contract, I think Pryor yeah. wins. But that's yeah. just my analysis of the yeah. history of the NFL. Check, 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 check. No, it's too much. Just a second. Trying to make some adjustments. All right, go ahead, guys. All oh, right, we just finished our point. Perfect. Um, for me, I have I personally I believe that Terrell Pryor will end up. Uh, you know, I don't stat things out and go at you know you know game by game how I think people are going to do. But for me, I see Terrell Pryor finishing with close to thirteen hundred yards, nine plus or eight to nine TDs, ninety to ninety five receptions in that offense. Easily, I agree. I think he finishes in the top ten among wide receivers. He's yeah. dropped. He's drafted as a number two. For me, I actually have him. Um, you know, if you go into like our sleepers and busts that we had in in uh, in our draft guide. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 14 in standard and the wide receiver 18 in, in PPR. I have him as a sleeper because I think that's still too low for him. Agreed. So, uh, here, oh, here's, here's a killer. The Kansas City Star reports that Tyreek Hill will give up, quote, the bulk of his kick return assignments. So you just lost about a third of your value in having Tyreek Hill. And the Chiefs just lost a lot of field position. Yes. Which is why they're the Chiefs. Yep. <laughs> Yay, Andy Reid. You know, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, th don't throw your shoulder out patting yourself on the back for having a B minus. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you're not the dumb kid in the class, but still, like, you probably could have done better. Um, so Tyreek Hill, I talked about today with, you know, uh, with the review of um, – with, of Kansas City, and you know, you give up the kick returns, and and I think that that, that just drops his value even more. He's not he's not a thousand yard receiver. No. He's not a true number one, and they the number one there is Kelsey, 
And then number two is the running back because Alex Smith can't throw the ball more than 10 yards. Yeah, correct. All right. Um, let's see. Trying to go through. Uh, FS1 analyst Chris Carter claims to have inside information on the looming Ezekiel Elliott suspension. Now, I haven't heard much about this, Greg. You said that Carter seems to think it's going to be like four games. Well, Carter, uh, in an interview, made uh, he alluded to the Tom Brady situation with this in the sense that evidence – uh, may have been destroyed that was demanded in the process of the investigation. That is why Brady was suspended for four games. Brady was not suspended for four games because of anything he did on the football field or inv involving footballs or the like. It was regarding evidence. So that is what is being alleged by Chris Carter in the, in the interview that's out there. Okay, then. Um... Okay, I'd, I have to, I have to laugh, kind of laugh at this. We have, we actually have one watch, one person watching, actually a couple people watching on Facebook, and uh, one of them actually commented on our Mixon comments. Mixon, no, no, and no. <laughs> I don't like the fact that he knocks out chicks, but seriously, <laughs> he's gonna be better than these other dudes. You go ahead and take Ty Montgomery above Joe Mixon. And let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> All right. Um, and we've got. I know that we had a, a question or a question actually posted on Twitter that we'll get to uh, just before we uh, move on to our next section. So, all right, uh, go through a few more stories here. Um, Jamal Charles will play in Thursday's preseason opener, so we'll see how that goes. See uh, how long he can make it before he te tears his uh, his ACL. Either one of them. Um, Jimmy Graham said he feels almost 100 times better than he did last season and is down from 280 pounds to 260 pounds. And they still won't throw to him. No, I think, <laughs> actually, I think they'll throw to him a lot more. I just think that this means that he won't be on the line very much. I think that they may split him out more as a wide receiver more often now because of that. Yay, less protection for Russell Wilson. <laughs> but what they'll do is not that Graham could really block to protect him to begin with. They'll they'll yeah. run more two wide receiver sets is what they're going to do. So, um, let's uh, go. Let's see what else. Vikings activated Latavius Murray. Uh, Andrew Luck may not even be ready to start the beginning of the year, but they're not going to put him on the pub list. You do not want to touch Andrew Luck in this situation. I'm sorry. You just get your quarterback somewhere else. I mean, I, I understand the theory of not taking a quarterback high, but certainly don't risk it on one like this. Don't, I mean, don't be a bonehead. I mean, that's just that, – that's absolutely insane when you're getting this kind of guidance from a front office. They have no idea what's going on with the guy. All right. Uh Ted Ginn is listed as the starter opposite Michael Thomas on the Saints' first unofficial depth chart. That does not surprise me. Deep post route. <laughs> Basically, that's, that's all he can all run. All he can run. <laughs> um, I mean, that doesn't surprise me because Willie Sneed is their slot guy. And when do they not run more than two wide receivers? Right. At yes. the line, they still have three wide receivers. I mean, I mean, the Saints don't have a power package. They don't. Well, Drew Brees goes through progressions as well. It's not like you're playing with some of these other clouds who can only maybe hit two quarter, you know, two progressions. So yeah. it's completely irrelevant. Um, Jay Ajayi is back uh, practicing on a limited basis with his concussion. Um, let's see. Who the hell is this at quarterback, says Jay Ajayi? <laughs> why is he smoking <laughs> yeah, why, why a cigarette this guy doesn't seem to give a darn uh let's see um eagles so okay we get we get back to the jordan matthews thing eagles coach doug peterson said that jordan matthews will not have a reduced role this season and yet he's still being seen as trade bait you you signed two two wide receivers and he will not see a reduced role yeah. his role last year was not very not very big. No. <laughs> so you sign two wide receivers. The way it works is that rule goes down. 
Well, if it was low enough, maybe it doesn't go any further down. It just stays no, the it'll same. it'll go further down. You're asking for a lot of up <laughs> from Wentz. See, the, the, it only goes up or down. And so it's either a lot of up from Wentz, which maybe, or more down for Jordan, which possibly. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that all of a sudden Jeffrey's going to get a lot of yards. Those are just a lot of drop balls that could have been thrown at Jordan Matthews. All right. Arrowhead Pride's Pete Sweeney reports third round running back Kareem Hunt continues to see more first team reps at Chiefs camp. I, will, I have said this before. I will say it again. Kareem Hunt is this year's Jordan Howard. Kareem Hunt will take over the role from Spencer Ware. It may take it may take four or five weeks instead of the two that it took Jordan Howard because of an injury to Langford. Kareem Hunt will be the running back to own in the Cincinnati or in the Kansas City backfield, period. I believe that wholeheartedly. He will be I think he has the ability to finish as a top twelve running back this year. I agree. He's he's the guy to own, and that 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 split in carries is you know pushing fifty fifty to start the season. Yeah. You know, maybe it's fifty five forty five, but I mean, it's already on on kind of the brink. You don't go and draft a running back in the third round if you're Andy Reid if you think that Spencer Ware is your guy. And Spencer Ware, in a lot of ways, meets the dynamics of an Andy Reid offense, but he doesn't totally meet it. Hence, they went and got Kareem Hunt. So I agree. He's the guy who's gonna who's just gonna gather momentum as the season goes on. Well, they've been described as the same type of runner. The main difference is Kareem Hunt doesn't put the ball on the ground like Spencer Ware does. Kareem Which Hunt is generally had, frowned upon. <laughs> generally, just, just ask all the just ask Aaron, Jeremy Hill and all the times he's been benched for fumbles. Right. Um, no, Kareem Hunt had a single fumble in his entire college career, and it was in the middle of a like a, a massive rainstorm, and he still was the one that ended up recovering it. Yeah. He never lost a fumble in college. He never lost a fumble in college. He had one single fumble, and he recovered it. So that's absurd. That's crazy. That's yeah. absolutely. the guy knows how to take care of the football, and I think that's one of the main the main things that that Andy Reid one of the big things that Andy Reid's looking for. For me, I'm gonna nickname him Stickum. <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of Jeremy Hill, Jeremy Hill is listed as the starting running back on the Bengals' unofficial depth chart. Hmm. We're just going to leave that. We're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dante Moncrief returned to practice Wednesday. I think Don. See, I like Dante Moncrief. The guy just can't stay healthy. I mean, in what was it in nine games last year? He scored seven touchdowns. In in was in the last in sixteen in sixteen games with Andrew Luck over the last two years he has twelve touchdowns. Some it's something ridiculous like that. Well, he's not getting sixteen games with Andrew Luck this season. <laughs> um, you know, I the guy the guy is a is a touchdown monster. I mean, you play in it. I know that there are some people that still old fashioned play TD only leagues. Um. I just he can't stay healthy. That's the that's his main issue. So all right. Uh we don't have much more here. Let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. Because it's well uh little announcement. Uh Devonta Freeman signed five year forty one million dollar contract extension through twenty twenty, which basically means Tevin Coleman's gone after his contract is up uh, at the end of next year. Or they'll look to trade him next offseason. They, they, well, yeah, they could do that. You know, one year kind of a trade type of thing. Um, especially when they brought Brian Hill when they when they drafted Brian Hill. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Hill's like a sixth or seventh round draft pick, but he's a he's a beast of a runner too. So, uh, Boston Herald's Jeff House says Brandon Cooks has quote put on a clinic during joint practices with the Jaguars this week. He was going against the Jaguars secondary. <laughs> so, um, you know, just hold on to that. <laughs> it's like when I go down and dominate fifth graders in the post at the basketball court. I mean, I understand they're supposed to have a, they're, they're, they're um, they've got a young defensive core, the Jaguars do, that is supposed to be getting better and better. 
but they're still like in their first, second, or third years. I mean, there's it's a still very, very young core that needs a little more refining. Um, New Jersey Advanced Media's Connor Hughes reports Austin Safarian Jenkins has quote dominated at Jets camp. <laughs> Again, look at the defense he's going up against. He's going up against his own Jets defense. The gifted kid on the short bus. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that out loud? <laughs> My fault. I thought I was on That's mute. terrible. That's, that's horrible, Greg. That, that I do not speak for Skull King. I speak solely <laughs> for myself. Here we go. Dion, let's move on. Dion, Dion Lewis and James White were listed as the Patriots starting running backs on the latest depth chart. Mike Gillisley and Rex Burkhead were nowhere to be seen on there. Dion Lewis and James White. So I'm amazed that Dion Lewis is still listed as the starting running back with Gillisley there, to be honest. Um, no, and I think that's I think that's it. Oh, Amari Cooper with the leg injury has missed the last five Raiders practices. I don't, you know, as of right now, I don't see uh, a whole lot. So anything else than that? So, um, I think that is it for there. I did want to address the one question that I know we got on our podcast. Let me see where was it? Where was Dan's question? Oh, it's from Beerfield Fantasy in general. Our favorite back end of the roster running back stash. So a guy that you would draft late. Um, kind of your favorite guy to draft late in the you know end of the end of the draft in order to hold on to just in case. Uh, for me, I mean, if we're looking late, late. Um, I'm kind of in, in one of these guys I'm going to come back to, but I'm kind of in that Marlon Mack or, uh, or Joe Williams range. Yeah. I like, I like both those for me looking at it. I mean, I could go a little bit, I go a little bit deeper in that and go down you know, if Dion Lewis right now is, is actually on the starting or is listed as a starting running back, you know, I'd take him in the 14th round. Sure. Um, just in case, but I mean, really, I mean, I mean, I'm with you there. Uh, Williams, Mac, Gio Bernard in the 12th. I like those guys. Uh, one, it would be a deep stash because you're looking at two all stars in front of him, would be Alvin Kamara, who's insane yeah. running back in college coming out of Tennessee. But the, the thing that I would say is. If you're a believer in that Peterson's knee will not hold up throughout the year, which he's older, who who knows? He did have a full year off. I don't think it's going to last the full season. Uh, and then uh, the fumbling issues uh, as well. It, it, it's just one of those things that I think you're going to have to wait till like week six for it to show fruition. But if you're patient, I think that'll pay off because he won't sit on the waiver wire. Someone will hold him on their roster. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to cover. Um, maybe instead of doing two from each guy on these, we'll just do one per position. Um. So let's go ahead and start. What we're doing tonight is we're looking at guys that we think are being over or underdrafted. Um. Not uh, not drafted enough. They're being underappreciated. So uh, let's go ahead and start with our, our quarterback guru, Greg. And who do you have as your, your main guy being underdrafted so far right now, according to Fantasy Football Calculator? Uh, at this point, if I'm going to look at it, and I'm looking at underdrafted, I'm going to say Eli Manning. I don't know why I keep coming back to this guy. Uh, but 16th-ranked quarterback overall there. You add Brandon Marshall. Um, you add Evan Ingram at tight end. Uh, you have ideally a healthy Sterling Shepard at that point, and you still have Odell Beckham Jr. So um, I think that Eli Manning is is more than a serviceable quarterback, and somehow, despite not being drafted most years, I still see him on you know people's rosters and starting more often than not. True. I one hundred percent agree. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, for me, for me, I'm going a little bit deeper, uh, and I'm going to Blake Bortles currently being drafted as uh, the fourth uh, pick of the 14th round, and here's why. Um, yes, he had a lower year last year in terms of touchdown production. Yes, he produces a lot of interceptions. Uh, in 2015, he had 35 touchdowns, was number two in the league for passing TDs, but led the league in interceptions with 18. Last year, his touchdowns were lower, 23. Their offense had some serious struggles, uh, cost the coach his job, as well as the defensive struggles. Now they've established a little bit more of a running game, which is going to take the pressure off, allow them to throw the ball a little bit deeper. I think you'll see Blake Bortles uh, as a serviceable top 12 quarterback this year. Um, I'm I'm trying to look at this to make sure I actually have the settings right for this. Okay. Yeah, Blake Bortles last year. It looks like in standard scoring, where the there's, you get minus two points for interceptions, six points for touchdowns. Blake Bortles finished as the quarterback seven. Yep. With a crappy year that he had last year, he finished as the quarterback seven. The year before, he finished as the quarterback five. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's now the thing about Blake Bortles is it's most likely going to be kind of back and forth on whether he has a really crappy game or a really good game. It's going to um, be a painful season, but it'll <laughs> still be good. Um, but yeah, I I definitely see that. Um, yeah, I especially if especially if your team if your league does not give uh, negative points for touchdowns and turnovers, that just skyrockets Blake Bortles right there because he also runs the ball last year he finished with more rush yards than russell wilson mighty russell wilson was injured and only had 259 rushing yards but bortles finished with over 300 rushing yards and three running tds so or 359 he ran for 100 yards more than russell wilson well that's because no one else on his that's because no one else on his team could run the ball huh that's because no one else on his team could run the ball that's why he had 300 yards and this year they've got Fournette, so he probably won't be needed as much to run the ball at the uh, at the goal line. Um, for me, I I don't know why. I mean, I keep going back to him. Uh, Matthew Stafford is quarterback number fourteen because he's in an offense that is going to continually throw the crap out of the ball. Um, I mean, last year Stafford finished as what is four five? What did he finish? Number eleven, looks like six. Last year he finished as number eleven. However, the reason that he finished number 11 was because halfway through the season, he was it sprained or broke his middle finger on his throwing hand and kept playing. All right, let me see if uh, real quickly, I'm going to pull up his stats from last, last year. Um, you look at the, the first half of the season compared to the second half of the season. See, oh, I don't have that on here. Um, but you look at it, his efficiency in the first half of the season was phenomenal, and the second half of the season not so much. I mean, I want to say he he used his his interception his interception rate. Let's see, he finished overall touchdowns to interception with uh, twenty four to ten, but like eight of those interceptions were in the last nine games, so. Um, as long as he can stay healthy, I think he'll be fine. And they're going to have to throw the ball, throw the crap out of the ball, especially if you know uh, they have the same problems they did at running back last year with everyone getting injured. So, all right, moving on. Let's go on to running backs, underdrafted running backs. Justin, we'll start with you this time. Uh, for me, uh, it's Quiz Rogers. Uh, currently being drafted as the fourth pick of the ninth round from Tampa Bay. He's going to be the starter for the first four weeks. There's no guarantee that Doug Martin, uh, when he returns, takes over that starting role. In addition, Jaquiz Rogers, when he was the main guy last year, was very, very good uh, and broke off some big runs, was very, very productive. Um, Obviously, when other individuals who were ahead of him in the depth chart last year came back, his numbers continue to drop, but he still had a very good yards per carry average. Uh, and so I look for him to have a really good first four games. 
you're going to get uh, a, a top 20 running back for the first four games. And then after that, it depends on how Doug Martin comes back and those kinds of things. So um, Jaquiz Rogers, I think, is being underdrafted at that in the ninth round, considering he starts the first four weeks and has a, a fairly easy schedule to start the, to start the season. Yeah, I like Jaquiz to possibly take over the role that this year. I think that's a, a strong possibility. Um, especially he does he does have the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. I know that's mainly Charles Sims' role uh, in that offense, but um, who? Charles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I I think that Jaquiz Rogers is the running back number forty one is being extremely underdrafted. Uh, Greg, who do you got? Uh, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, and I'll just go back to it, which is Jamal Williams, who's like the number 45 ranked running back uh, in Green Bay. It really pains me to ever give credit to anybody on the Packers, but they do have good players. And ultimately, uh, you know, Montgomery did a serviceable role, you know, a serviceable job in that role. But he's not he's not a legitimate running back. Like he's just – I mean, he's not a number one running back. Everybody in the league – everybody knows that. Uh, so – with what you're seeing with Williams in the preseason, uh, I think that that bodes well for people who want to take him late in the draft. Um, he could end up being the guy and could could push for a thousand yards. All right, yeah, I'm big on I'm I'm big on Williams too. I I'm not sure. I don't know how how Ty Montgomery can hold up um, to the beating. He he got a little bit in, he got a little bit beat up last year. Um, now you know. People kind of try to mention that you know the size difference. Ty Montgomery is actually bigger than Jamal Williams. He's an inch taller and weighs about ten to fifteen pounds more than Jamal Williams does. But I think that you know just having been a wide receiver most of his career or all of his career up till last year, I just I don't know if he's quite used to taking that kind of a beating. And I just don't know you know who knows how well he's going to be able to hold up to that. His, I mean honestly, his most productive games last year were where he was catching the ball eight, nine, ten times out of the backfield. So. All right. Well, just looking at this, I can name like seven people that I think are all being underdrafted. Um, you know, we talked about we talked about Rob Kelly in the intro, how it looks like he's pretty much the clear cut number one starter in Washington. So I'll leave that off. For me, it's Duke Johnson at number forty, just above Jaquiz Rogers. And the reason why is you've got him in Cleveland as the as right now they're saying that he is the lead to get the slot position role as a slot wide receiver which means that Isaiah Crowell is basically going to get all the runs um, all the running uh, touches and then he's also going to be moving back into the backfield to be catching on third downs which only builds I mean basically he could finish as a practically finish as a as a you know probably push upper end running back two numbers depending on how many receptions he gets. he's the last two years he's had 50 receptions a piece and now they want to throw him in the slot on top of playing on third downs so i really like this you know being a ppr guy i really like duke johnson if you can get him i mean getting him in the ninth round as the as the running back 40 i think is an absolute steal so all right wide receivers should I start this one? Yeah, go for it. All right, let me. Okay, we've talked about the you know we've we've beat the 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 Terrell Pryor horse dead. I think he's underdrafted at wide receiver fourteen, but that's just you know that's we're gonna we'll move on from there. Uh, let me make sure I get where he's at right. Where is he? Tyrell Williams as wide receiver number forty two being drafted in the ninth round in 12-team leagues PPR. A guy who finished with 1,000 yards last year, I want to say six touchdowns. I want to say he actually led the league in yards after contact, yards after the catch last year as well. He was like in the top five. And now you've got Mike Williams that we don't know when he's going to be healthy again with his back. So he is the number two wide receiver in a in a offense that is probably going to have to be you know very well could have to be pass happy again with Philip Rivers throwing the throwing the rock all around. So 
I I think that you know Tyrell Williams should be drafted much higher than than wide receiver number forty two. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely a fair assessment given what the guy showed last year. Uh, certainly, the the history of Keenan Allen, um, there could be a lot of a lot of value there, and they are they're always going to be a pass happy team, right? So every year you go forward, Gates gets another year older, and that's fewer receptions for him too. So uh, Tyrell Williams definitely still plays a uh, a valuable role, I would say, in that offense. All right, uh, Greg, your wide receiver. Uh, you know, at this point, it's, it's really hard to say um, who I would go with. Uh, if I'm looking deep in this list, uh, Cole Beasley is the 50th ranked wide receiver is a little bit ridiculous. First of all, again, a year older for Jason Witten, fewer receptions. Des Bryant, never consistent, doesn't produce. Cole Beasley, clear chemistry with Zach Prescott last year. What does that translate to this year, especially if Ezekiel Elliott's missing any kind of time? You need somebody to move the chains. That happens to be Cole Beasley. So he's a guy who looks to push 1,000 yards receiving, a guy who can get 80-plus receptions. He's probably not going to get much in the way of touchdowns. He's probably five or less. But uh, in a PPR league, I think he's phenomenal. My bonus name, which I throw in there because I just want to say for like at least the third, if not the fourth time this preseason, is Chad Williams. For the Cardinals, nobody's going to draft the guy. And I'm telling you, he is going to stand out above everybody else they have. Larry is on the way out. Williams appears to be the heir apparent from everything we hear down here. That's the guy I would really watch. Yeah, I like Williams. I think that he's he's he could very well be a star. I think for the most part, he's going to go on draft. And I think he's one of those ones that – if you guys, if you guys, once you're done with your draft, if you go ahead and make sure to go ahead and, and put guys on your watch list, because um, that's uh, you know, so that you know, you know, guys that you think that could possibly have breakouts or or, or you know, um, you know, could move into roles that you know, Williams is definitely a guy you know going into the draft that I really like that I think could have a could have a good role um, if if something were to happen to one of the other wide receivers, so. We've already shown that you know John Brown can't stay healthy. So who else is in front of him? JJ Nelson and Jerron Brown. That's not a that's not an intimidating list for me when it comes to Chad Williams beating someone out. No, it's Somebody, not. And John Brown's definitely not number two naturally anyway. So yeah. Justin. Uh for me, um, I'm gonna go with Kenny Britt, uh, who's currently being drafted in the tenth round, pick number eleven. Uh, who's currently below uh, both both of your guys' uh, picks uh, actually might be ahead of Cole Beasley. Um, but what I want to say about Kenny Britt is last year with the Rams um, on a garbage team, he had 1,000 yards, uh, 68 receptions, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. He now goes to a Browns team that is not a high-potent offense. Um, what the caveat I'll put here is – if Brock Osweiler is the starter, um, I negate everything I just said because he won't be able to throw the deep ball. Um, <laughs> but if anyone other than Brock Osweiler is the starting quarterback who can get the ball a little bit deeper and throw the deep ball, Kenny Britt's going to be a great person to pick up. Once again, a number one receiver on a bad offense is going to be overlooked. A thousand yards receiving is nothing to shake a stick at. Is going to be a highly – valuable player for your fantasy team. So that's why I like Kenny Britt. All right. Yeah, let's see. Last, let me – last year, Kenny Britt in – is this standard or PPR? Yeah, in PPR, Kenny Britt finished – oh, shoot. Now I don't have that here. I had it for a second. All right. Well, I guess – yeah, he finished as wide receiver number 28. So – and that was on a bad offense with with uh, with the Rams. So, all right, um, that's our, is that our three wide receivers? All right, so last but, last but not least, our tight ends that are being underdrafted. Uh, Justin, you start this one. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Benjamin Watson, and I'm going to pull up. I forgot where he is currently being drafted, and he might not currently be being. Ben Watson is not currently being drafted. He's not currently being drafted. And here's why I like him. Uh, when you look at 
uh, the Ravens' offense. Joe Flacco loves his tight ends. Uh, Pitta last year had 86 catches and 800 yards. Flacco likes his tight ends. Now, if Flacco can't stay healthy, obviously this changes things. Um, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper than our standard Cameron Brake, Colby Fleener conversation. Um, and so I wanted to give kind of a deeper sweeper. Didn't want to talk about ASJ, but uh, I think Benjamin Watson was a, was a serviceable tight end for a year with Drew Brees and the Saints and can be serviceable um, for uh, the Ravens with the massive current turnover in the tight end position. I I can agree. If he, it, it all depends on how well he can come back from what was it, an Achilles injury last year. I can't remember. It was some sort of something that I think it was a torn Achilles in training in like the first or second week of training yeah. at the end of this season. So, um, yeah, I think he can. I think he could be serviceable enough uh, to be that that late round type of pick. Uh, Greg, go ahead. Uh, running back or your uh, tight end. Um, I'm going to go way deep. Um, so I'm going to go with Bears rookie Adam Shaheen uh, over current Bears starter Deion Sims. Uh, I think when you just look at what this guy represents athletically, size-wise, um, you know, he could be the second coming of a Rob Gronkowski type. So I, I think that not early in the season, but, you know, especially if you're looking at Dynasty Leagues, that's a guy that, that's going to be worth watching, um, you know, on the waiver wire for, for the Bears. I mean, the guy is an absolute, uh, absolute athletic freak. Okay. Mine is Austin Hooper from, from Atlanta. And the main reason for that is because of the new, um, because of the new offensive coordinator in Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian likes his tight ends. Um, you know, he was the one who was, who was the coach for uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins in college where he had those, you know, great numbers in college as a, t- as a receiving tight end. Um, I think Austin Hooper could very well come out as the number one tight end there and be much more valuable than the 19th ranked or the 19th drafted tight end off the board. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still dumbfounded. Him and him and Cameron Brait, I believe, are getting not even close to enough love for for what their abil- what they're able to do. Um, so, all right, I think that's it. And since you know, all that's left is defenses and kickers, and we tell everyone leave those to your last two picks, or stream them, or stream them. Um, uh, anything else, Greg? You got anything else? The only thing I would say on that tight end list is Martellus Bennett at number seven. I would take him over Tyler Eifert. I would take him over Jimmy Graham. I would take him over Jordan Reed. He'd be my number four tight end in, in fantasy this year. Uh, I wouldn't take him over Jimmy Graham, but I would definitely take him over Tyler Eifert. So I can understand. I can understand, I can understand that, and I think he's. I think him and Delaney Walker are probably a coin flip, personally. So, Justin, you got anything else? That's it for me. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, thank you all for listening to the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Skullroot, and for Justin and Greg, um, this has been a whole lot of fun. We will uh, we will be back next week uh, with more fantasy football knowledge, and don't forget to also tune in um, not only on Facebook Live but also uh, uh, wherever you listen to our podcast, whether it be iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, uh, for Greg's uh, continued coverage of the uh, NFL and going over two teams a day with um, their, his fantasy football analysis. So, uh, again, you guys, uh, thank you everyone for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Hey, Skull King Nation, thank you for listening to the Skull King Football Podcast. Did you like this episode? If so, be sure to go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube to subscribe. Also, please leave us a rating and reviews to let us know how we can better help you rule your leagues.